This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Kristen Hughes. The Lady of Shalott by Alfred Lord Tennyson, 1833 edition. On either side the river lie long fields of barley and of rye, that clothe the wold and meet the sky. And through the field the road runs by to many towered Camelot, the yellow leaved water lily, the green she the daffodilly, tremble in the water chilly round about Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens shiver, the sunbeam showers break and quiver in the stream that runneth ever by the island in the river, flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers, and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. Underneath the bearded barley, the reaper, reaping late and early, hears her ever chanting cheerly, like an angel singing clearly o'er the stream of Camelot. Piling sheaves and furrows airy, beneath the moon, the reaper weary listening whispers, "'Tis the fairy lady of Shalott." The little isle is all enrailed with a rose fence, and o'er trailed with roses. By the marge unhailed the shallop flitteth, silken sailed, skimming down to Camelot. A pearl garland winds her head, she leaneth on a velvet bed, fully, royally apparelled, the Lady of Shalott. No time hath she to sport and play, a charmed web she weaves all way. A curse is on her if she stay her weaving either night or day to look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, therefore she weaveth steadily. Therefore no other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. She lives with little joy or fear, Over the water running near The sheep-bell tinkles in her ear. Before her hangs a mirror clear, Reflecting towered Camelot. And as the mazy web she whirls, She sees the surly village churls, And the red cloaks of market girls Pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, An abbot on an ambling pad, Sometimes a curly shepherd lad, Or long-haired page in crimson clad Goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue The knights come riding two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, The Lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights To weave the mirror's magic sights, for often, through the silent nights, a funeral, with plumes and lights and music, came from Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead, came two young lovers, lately wed. I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. A bowshot from a bower eaves, he rode between the barley sheaves. The sun came dazzling through the leaves, And flamed upon the brazen greaves Of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight for ever kneeled To a lady in his shield, That sparkled on the yellow field Beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free, Like to some branch of stars We see hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down from Camelot, and from his blazoned baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue unclouded weather, thick jewelled shone the saddle leather, the helmet, and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down from Camelot. As often through the purple night, below the starry clusters bright, Some bearded meteor trailing light moves over green Shalott. His broad clear brow in sunlight glowed, On burnished hooves his war-horse trode. From underneath his helmet flowed his coal-black curls as on he rode, As he rode down from Camelot. 
From the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror. Tira lira, tira lira, sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom, she made three paces through the room. She saw the water flower bloom, she saw the helmet and the plume. She looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide, the mirror cracked from side to side. The curse is come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning, the broad stream in his banks complaining, heavily, the low sky raining over towered Camelot. Outside the isle a shallow boat beneath a willow lay afloat. Below the carven stern she wrote, The Lady of Shalott. A cloud-white crown of pearl she dight, All raimented in snowy white that loosely flew, Her zone in sight, Clasped with one blinding diamond bright, Her wide eyes fixed on Camelot. Though the squally east wind keenly blew, With folded arms serenely by the water Stood the queenly lady of Shalott. With a steady, stony glance, Like some bold seer in a trance, Beholding all his own mischance, Mute, with a glassy countenance, She looked down to Camelot. It was the closing of the day, she loosed the chain, and down she lay. The broad stream bore her far away, the Lady of Shalott. As when to sailors while they roam, by creeks and outfalls far from home, rising and dropping with the foam. From dying swans wild warblings come, blown shoreward, so to Camelot. Still, as the boat had wound along the willowy hills and fields among, they heard her chanting her death song, the Lady of Shalott. A long drawn carol, mournful, holy, she chanted loudly, chanted lowly, till her eyes were darkened wholly, and her smooth face, sharpened, slowly turned to towered Camelot. For ere she reached upon the tide the first house by the waterside, Singing, in her song she died, the Lady of Shalott. Under tower and balcony, by garden wall and gallery, A pale, pale corpse she floated by, Dead cold between the houses high, Dead into towered Camelot. Knight and burgher, lord and dame, to the planked wharfage came. Below the stern they read her name, the Lady of Shalott. They crossed themselves, their stars they blessed, knight, minstrel, abbot, squire, and guest. There lay a parchment on her breast, that puzzled, more than all the rest, the well-fed wits at Camelot. The web was woven curiously, the charm is broken utterly. Draw near, and fear not. This is I, the Lady of Shalott. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lady of Shalott, 1842 version. By Alfred Lord Tennyson. Recorded by Kirsten Ferreri for LibriVox.org. On either side the river lie long fields of barley and of rye that clothe the world and meet the sky, and through the field the road runs by to many towered Camelot. And up and down the people go, gazing where the lilies blow, round an island there below, the island of Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver, through the wave that runs forever by the island in the river, flowing down to Camelot. 
four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers and the silent isle embowers the lady of shalott by the margin willow veiled slide the heavy barges trailed by slow horses and unhailed the shallop flitteth silken sailed skimming down to camelot but who hath seen her wave her hand or at the casement seen her stand or is she known in all the land the lady of shalott only reapers reaping early in among the bearded barley hear a song that echoes cheerly from the river winding clearly down to towered camelot and by the moon the reaper weary piling sheaves in uplands airy listening whispers tis the fairy lady of shalott part two there she weaves by night and day a magic web with colours gay she has heard a whisper say a curse is on her if she stay to look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, and so she weaveth steadily, and little other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. And moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near, winding down to Camelot. There the river eddy whirls, and there the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls, pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or long-haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue the knights come riding, two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights, for often through the silent nights a funeral with plumes and lights and music went to Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead came two young lovers lately wed. I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. Part three. A bow shot from her bower eaves, he rode between the barley sheaves, the sun came dazzling through the leaves, and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight for ever kneeled to a lady in his shield, that sparkled on the yellow field, beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free, like to some branch of stars we see, hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down to Camelot and from his blazoned baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue unclouded weather thick jewelled shone the saddle-leather, the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down to Camelot. As often through the purple night below the starry clusters bright some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still Shalott. His broad clear brow in sunlight glowed, on burnished hooves his war-horse trode. From underneath his helmet flowed his coal-black curls as on he rode, as he rode down to Camelot. From the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror, Tira lira by the river, sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom, she made three paces through the room. She saw the water-lily bloom, she saw the helmet and the plume. She looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide. The mirror cracked from side to side. The curse has come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. Part Four. In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning, the broad stream in his banks complaining, heavily the low sky raining over towered Camelot. Down she came and found a boat beneath a willow left afloat, and round about the prow she wrote, The Lady of Shalott. And down the river's dim expanse, like some bold seer in a trance, seeing all his own mischance, with a glassy countenance did she look to Camelot. And at the closing of the day she loosed the chain, and down she lay. The broad stream bore her far away, the Lady of Shalott. Lying robed in snowy white, that loosely flew to left and right, the leaves upon her falling light, through the noises of the night she floated down to Camelot. And as the boat had wound along, the willowy hills and fields among, they heard her singing her last song, the Lady of Shalott. Heard a carol mournful, holy, chanted loudly, chanted lowly, till her blood was frozen slowly, and her eyes were darkened wholly, turned to towered Camelot. For ere she reached upon the tide, 
the first house by the waterside. Singing in her song, she died, the Lady of Shalott. Under tower and balcony, by garden wall and gallery, a gleaming shape she floated by, dead pale between the houses high, silent into Camelot. Out upon the wharfs they came, knight and burgher, lord and dame, and round the prow they read her name, the Lady of Shalott. Who is this, and what is here? And in the lighted palace near died the sound of royal cheer, and they crossed themselves for fear, all the knights at Camelot. But Lancelot mused a little space. He said, She has a lovely face. God in his mercy lend her grace, the Lady of Shalott. End of The Lady of Shalott by Alfred Lord Tennyson This recording is in the public domain.